Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The Locked On Blue Jays boys have hit 100 episodes. What a day to be alive. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. We have the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play with daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. Well, well, well. Who would have thought these two idiots would have made it to 100 episodes? Wow. It has been an absolute blast. If you guys don't know, I'm Braden Iwasco. He's Carter First. You can find us on Twitter, braden 5 Iwasco, Carter First too, as well on Instagram and TikTok at Lockdown Blue Jays, as well as, you know, we're just really appreciative of you guys watching us, listening to us, whatever you do. And if you are a first-time listener, or you've been listening for a while, drop a subscription here on YouTube. It really helps us out, and it keeps us at the top of your guys' page. Carter, my God, my man. You know what? I got the mustache back. It's a throwback to the first demo that we sent to Locked On uh, back, like, I don't know, six months ago, maybe more. I don't know when it was exactly. Uh, what are you feeling? 100 episodes. Well, it's crazy because we made our first demo about Shohei Otani. Now Shohei Otani is coming back to the Toronto Blue Jays. Let's go. It's finally here. It's turning this team around. Yeah, absolutely not. But one thing that we do have here is I still have the love for the Toronto Blue Jays, even though they've disappointed me this entire season. Yeah, like never thought that we'd get this like to this spot this quickly. It's been absolutely insane. Just, uh, just thinking about how, how the last five years have gone, honestly, just kind of sitting, talking to uh, group chats, whether it's in person or whatever about the Toronto Blue Jays. The fact that we get to discuss our thoughts, feelings, perspectives, whatever it is about the Toronto Blue Jays for thousands of people to see literally is absolutely insane. Never thought I would be in this scenario. It's been a ton of fun. This is just simply does not feel like work ever. I mean, we've had a lot of late nights, but I mean, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing. Just kind of snapping it around about the Toronto Blue Jays. The only thing that I would trade is like for the Toronto Blue Jays to be a little bit better this season. But again, it's been a lot, long time coming. It's 100 episodes. Just crazy that we're here. Yeah, I can't believe it. Honestly, I, I mean, you don't think about it because we do an episode literally every single day. So you don't think it, it but it goes by in a flash. And it just, it's just been nuts. I mean, watching all the games, talking to people. We went down to Toronto, had a blast, met a bunch of amazing people. Um, and it has just been on. Un, un, unbelievable. I have no other words than unbelievable. It is just crazy. Um, and, and honestly, I never would have thought this. I never would have thought that I'd be sitting on a podcast uh, with, you know, thousand people listening to, you know, us two idiots talk about the Blue Jays and give our feelings. But uh, you know what? I think everybody's in the same boat. And I think that's why this sort of works is that, you know, we're just as much fans of this team as the people listening to us because they, everybody needs a place to go and vent about the Toronto Blue Jays this year. Um but Carter, we got a bunch of good guests coming on. They have been joining us uh, all season long here and there, and they will continue to since I will be actually, when this comes out, I will be in New York City. Carter's going to have to do a couple episodes with uh, actually the two guests we have on. He's going to have them on. He's going to, I might try to hop on from New York is, you know, with, you know, everything working out how it should, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Uh so, Carter, I think the biggest question that me and you have to get into, and we're going to try to make this a fun, little bit lighthearted, uh, you know, just sort of reminisce. We don't want to be, you know, in our heads, depressed about the Toronto Blue Jays. So, Carter, who has been your favorite player this Blue Jays season? So far for me, I mean, let's be honest. There hasn't been a ton of players that have looked good for the Toronto Blue Jays. I think everyone that has been listening to this podcast would probably know who you're going to say for this. But for me, I might be a little bit more of a wild card. But I think for me, the the person that I have to go with here is actually the jersey that I bought when we were in Toronto, and it is Dalton Varsho. Just the things that this guy does defensively, the hits he gets offensively as well. This guy seems like he's always hitting the ball hard, gets a ton of extra base hits, has the most home runs on the team, and just probably the best outfielder in the game of baseball. So uh, to all the haters that uh, were hating on that trade, screw you, I'm loving it right now. Dalton Varsho. There's not a lot of offensive production that you can get from this Toronto Blue Jays team, but Dalton Varsho has been a bright spot in that, having a way better season than he did last season. And like I said, it's just this guy's diving all over the field, making hard plays look very easy. 
a left-handed bat that this team so desperately needed. So for me, it's Dalton Varsho. I'll throw it back to you. Who's been your favorite player so far this season? Well, you know this as long with everybody listening. If you've been listening to us for this season, my favorite player is Davis Schneider, without a question of a doubt in my mind. Uh, he seems to come up in big spots and makes the play. I mean, he hit the game-winning home run in extra innings against the Pirates. Uh, and he's had just a lot of plays like that with runners on base. And, I mean, big utility player. Um, I, I have a lot of respect for guys that can play all over the diamond. And he's the guy that's been doing that. And just the way he came up, the whole story, everything behind him. I mean, if you look into him, I don't want to get into the personal struggles that he was that he'd been through with his family. But uh, as well, it just it, it, it just insane to see how this guy came up obviously i think he was like whatever 26th round pick or something too like just just an incredible story uh and yeah he's just an inspiration uh, i think to young players uh fans love him he's got one of the most electric walkout songs i've heard and the whole building loves it when he comes out so just electric there but carter um just give me quickly just in like 10 words, your overall thought on this Toronto Blue Jays season so far. I know where this is going to go, but just your overall thoughts so far this season. Yeah, I just want to quickly correct you here. And you were close, 28th round. So oh. with David Schneider, even more unlikely. But 10 words, uh, I don't even think I'll need 10. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just use three. Disappointing and frustrating. It's, uh, it's tough when you look at this team. Eighth highest payroll in baseball pretty much promised the world for the last two, three seasons. You look at Vladdy in 2021, he has 48 home runs, is the runner up with the MVP. Probably would have won, would have won the MVP award if Shohei Otani didn't exist. And just to say that, like, Vladdy isn't bad now, but you look at how good this Toronto Blue Jays team was in 2021. You look at how good this offense was in 2021. The fact that we're somehow here with an offense that is so subpar, so mediocre, mediocre might actually be overreaching for this Toronto Blue Jays offense. It just has not met expectations whatsoever. Definitely disappointing to see. I was hoping that, that we could get some redemption here in the playoffs. Now it's the playoffs are very up in the air. I don't even say, I can't even say it's 50 50. I think a lot of, if we had a survey going up for Toronto Blue Jays fans, I think the most majority of them would say that the Toronto Blue Jays probably aren't making the playoffs. I know you said 10 words or less. But I usually have them just start yapping. I know you do as well, but I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll, let's maybe make your cap at like 150 words or less. Cause yeah. I mean, I'm a yapper, but you're quite the yapper. So I'll give it back to you. How has uh, your expectations been with this Toronto Blue Jays team been so far? Terrible, terrible, garbage, terrible, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, it's been frustrating to watch. Uh, I, I really wish this team was good. And I think I expected them to be better. I had the little bit of a hope in me that they would be good and they're just not. And, and just flat out, they're just not playing good baseball. They're not meshing together. And, and it just seems like some one thing's on one day, the other thing's on the other, next day, and then everything's off the third day. So just nothing's working for this ball club. Hopefully they'll be able to turn it around. But uh, as you guys will see in the – we did two two interviews, one with one guy, one with another guy. Um that have been that have joined us before it's we wanted to make it a discussion everybody bring in what what they thought so far this year so carter i'm gonna leave it there i no, want to spend it actually just oh okay here. okay so i threw this in for sure with skylar i think i did with uh well i guess i'm just throwing up the names here i won't say the other one you'll see who it is but uh we asked both of them who we thought like the problem or what we thought the problem with this team was, whether it was a John Schneider thing or Ross Atkins thing. And we made them say it in percentages. So it's the players, obviously the coaching staff, mostly John Schneider or Ross Atkins for you personally, what's the problem with this Toronto Blue Jays team? What percentage wise are you allocating to each different category of this Toronto Blue Jays team? Uh, Carter, to be honest with you, I, I thought about this after you asked them. Um, and, and it's impossible for me not to hold the players accountable. They have to be better. Everyone expected more out of these guys. I'm giving this 60% to the players. They have to be better. And in saying that, there should have been more moves made in the offseason. I think we all know that as Blue Jays fans. So I'm going to give 30% to Ross Atkins for creating this team. He's had years to do it, and they haven't won a playoff game. So, And then I'm giving 10% to John Schneider. I think he might deserve more than that. He's made some bonehead decisions. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's working with a lot of guys not playing up to their potential and a lot of guys not playing well. Um, and then he wasn't giving given guys in the offseason to then uh, be able to throw them into different situations. I don't think he's been good. 
I don't think John Schneider's been good at all. I really think John, uh, Ross Atkins just has been horrible. And this Blue Jays squad obviously needs to be better. Uh, so that's where I'm landing. Carter, how about yourself? Yeah, I'm sort of going along the same path as you. I have a little bit of different numbers here. But I think if you're not blaming the players, then I think you're just honestly wrong. Because the players ultimately end up and decide what happens on the field. John Schneider, Ross Atkins aren't the ones playing the games. So I got 55% of blame being on the players here. I think it had to be more the majority. You got, like, again, you're looking at this team. This team is the only they're the only players, the only people that can change the outcome of the Toronto Blue Jays team. Yeah, people can set you up for success. John Schneider can put the best lineup he wants to out there. Ross Atkins can try to construct the team as best as possible. But when you have an offense that has just simply been subpar, you look at George Springer, you look at Bo Bichette, you look at Alejandro Kirk, these guys have all been all-stars before and just simply are not playing up to their standard. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is on pace for like 15 home runs. Again, he's not playing bad baseball, but when you got 48 home runs in 2021, it's hard to not hold this team accountable for that. So that leaves me with Ross Atkins. And I got this guy at 40% because we saw the offense last season. It was not good. Again, his experiment with the, the, the defense first. Again, that I guess has worked out. We've had good defense. The pitching up until this year, the bullpen. Well, I can't even say that. The bullpen was good for one year. Let's be honest. It was good in 2023. was not that good in 2022. It was terrible in 2021. One thing he had, does, done, has done right is the starting pitching. But you, you look at the offense. I mean, look at this offseason. You were in on Shohei Otani. You were supposed to be sort of in on Cody Bellinger, maybe J.D. Martinez, maybe Jorge Soler, you name it, a bunch of other players that they could have signed. And we got Justin Turner, who's 39 years old. Again, not the worst signing, but just needed more. And IKF, who has been a pleasant surprise. But again, these aren't guys that are going to hit even 25 home runs. IKF, you'll be lucky if you get 10. Justin Turner, if you can get 15 to 20, you're – I guess you're going to be happy with that. So I got a huge percentage of this. Ross Atkins being 40%. He had to provide this team with a better offense. I got John Schneider with five. That's not saying that John Schneider's been good at all. I'm just saying, like, he's kind of just been playing the cards that he's dealt. Again, I'm floating way more respect for him compared to the players and Ross Atkins because John Schneider, again, you look at this lineup, it doesn't really matter where you put anyone, to be honest, because they're all just underperforming. Yes, the bullpen decisions have been not good at all. I'll say that. But again, he's kind of just playing with what he's dealt. You can't really do much about that. He hasn't been good. As Ross Atkins says, he's been incredible. Definitely wouldn't go that far. But I think uh, if you're out of all these people, like you can't really blame John Schneider for what's happening on the field. Yeah. And uh, you know what? We're going to ask all some of these questions to the guys we had on. Uh, first of all, Carter, let's throw it to our first guest. Before we get into that, of course, today's episode brought to you by Policy Genius. A lot of life insurance is unpredictable, but a good life insurance plan gives your family a financial safety net to protect against some of the unknowns. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It makes choosing the right policy for your family easy and quick. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for a million dollars of coverage. Some options are 100% online and let you avoid un unnecessary medical exams. As you guys know, um, I've always talked about this with Policy Genius every time we have their ad. Um, you know, it's it's never too early to start uh, preparing. I mean, obviously, like my parents, I've tried to talk to them about it, my grandparents and so on. I think it's a smart thing to to start looking into, uh, even even when you're young and, and, you know, you don't think anything can happen. Get peace of mind by finding the right life insurance policy with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. All right, 100th episode, guest one. You guys know him as the most degenerate gambler in the world, Skylar Peters. I know. Ross Fitter. Ross Fitter, too. How about that Raphael Devers MVP pick, though, boys? It's, oh, it's got a chance. Hey, it's starting to look good. You went yeah. on a little bit of a heater there, yeah. and uh, he's picking it up. Uh, oh, well, we're here. 100th episode, we made it. They didn't cancel us yet. Hopefully, we can Surprising last me. another 100 more. We'll see. Skylar, Peters, it is unbelievable to have you back. I know you've been on a couple times with us this season. Um, yeah, we just want to get your thoughts. 100th episode, it's crazy. Um, and how do you feel this season has gone so far? Tough, boys. Like, honestly, if you look, like, if I look, take a step back and I'm looking at the, the printable calendar right now. I'm like looking at the whole March, April, May, 
months together. And I, I kind of, I have the same feeling I had last year where I just, it's hard to like vibe with this baseball team, you know, like usually four out of five nights, you know, a guy goes out there and shoves and the offense doesn't support him. Obviously like you guys have talked about that every single morning, basically for, for two months now, but like the, we, we have one star playing like he should not reaching his potential that we've seen. And that's Vladimir Guerrero jr. Obviously like, I think 2021, it like looks like an aberration, but this is good. Like he's, he's almost batting 300. He's got some power played the three bag tonight, which was just insane. This is a Sunday night, by the way, I guess we're recording this one a bit early, but, uh, and he's open to doing it. He just wants to see the team win. I'm really happy with him. The pitching, obviously you cannot be upset about anything. You know, it's not the same guys like Swanson going down is tough, but other guys have stepped up. The starters have been, you know, generally reliable. The Manoa resurgence, you know, to some extent has been nice because we didn't know what we could expect from him, but just overall, you know, we're sitting here, you're double digit games back uh, at the outset of this four game set against Baltimore. And when this goes to air, you know, this, that could change a little bit, but the Yankees look good. Baltimore looks good. Tampa looks okay. I don't know if they're going to hold on. And, you know, Boston has been kind of surprising and it, like it just the it's hard to see this team doing anything like it just kind of seems like they're missing in the middle and that's the worst place to be man like be either be good or be bad you know and, and good to me is going to the wild card series and you know hopefully winning it like they you know they went there last year and you know, it didn't look didn't go good for them but it's just I, it's it's a hard team to cheer for at times and I, I love a lot of the players but I just don't I can't get behind the team as it stands right now. So that's kind of, it's tough, man. Like start of June. And I still really don't know how to feel about that team. Like I thought about this question all day when you, uh, when you text me earlier, but it's just, you know, I think a lot of people listening to this are, are probably the same, like you, a couple of good games and you get behind them. They had the six game win streak a little bit earlier in the year. You, you know, this is the team we wanted to see. And then, you know, they, they absolutely tanked after that for about two weeks. So it's just, it's back and forth and it's entertaining, but I'll give you that because you don't know what's going to happen every night. You know when you watch the when you watch the boys take the field. So uh, I've been pretty locked into this team. It's not like you're checked out on it. I don't think a lot of like core fans are checked out. Uh, but I really hope this team can pull it together. Start of June when people start paying attention, hockey's wrapping up, that sort of thing. Uh, not sure it's going to happen, but obviously that's what we're hoping for. But yeah, it's been an interesting start to the season. I can't say that before the season I thought the Blue Jays would be here, but here we are at the last place in, a- in the AL East. <laughs> Then yeah, my your Red Sox take not uh, not the worst thing I've ever seen, but well, they're, uh, fourth. they're they're not first, but they're fourth. They're above yeah. us. They, they, yeah, they're <laughs> unfortunately the Red yeah. Sox are better than us, and that's not something I would have said <laughs> at the start of the season. But this team has definitely changed completely from 2021. Such an offensive powerhouse now, kind of gone to a boring brand of baseball. They play defense first, don't score a lot of runs, have a good pitching, but the bullpen has kind of struggled throughout the season. But saying that, Skyler, who has been your favorite player to watch so far this season? I've been back and forth on this all year. I, you know what? I got to go with uh, Davis Schneider. I think to you, you know Chris. Um, or uh, George Springer has been a little disappointing, obviously. And I, I, I thought the writing was on the wall at the start of this year, like in this winter, that he wasn't going to be slotted in to lead off every single day, you know, for the rest of the season. It just didn't kind of felt like time's up on that part. And, you know, he's handled it well, but like the guy that's handled it better over the last week and a half, two weeks is Davis Schneider. Like this is a guy that plays the infield. And he's in, he's in left like quite a bit. I, Carter, you probably know how many times he started in left this year, like a position that was completely unfamiliar to him before last year. Obviously it's a second year in the majors. Like really like it is his first season. If he was an August call up last year, like he guy doesn't have a ton of experience. You know, he does what you want from a leadoff guy. He brings the energy. He's got a power bat, which like we sorely miss right now for a team with our home run leader, having seven freaking home runs. And you know, I, I'm just really impressed with the, not not necessarily the numbers and everything uh, as a whole. Like those are impressive enough, but I just think, it, it, given the situation and a guy that hopefully we can count to be on this team for a while, or at the very least, and we'll get into this in a sec, like be a valuable guy in terms of asset management if if it comes to that point. Not that he's getting traded this year, but you know, down the road and stuff like that. Like, it, you know, he, he means something to the ball club. Uh, and I'm just really happy with Schneider. And he's just 
the vibes are immaculate, right? Like we all know, Babe Schneider. He's he's easy to get behind, that's for sure. So I, I'll, I'll shout out Alec Manoa uh, for sure. Like I, that's the other guy I was in between. Love the guy. He's he's this guy on my back right now. Um, we, you know, I, I think at some point, Braden, you said to me in the office that you didn't think he'd sniff the majors this year, and he's come out and he's he's shown some flashes of the old him, and he's also a guy in a you know a really tough situation with a lot of pressure on him. And, you know, it's been, it's been up and down in his uh, starts, you know, with a big club, but, you know, I, I'm just impressed with him, you know, getting back to this point too, and hopefully he can build on. Yeah. And I think that's the crazy part. I think everybody, including the two of us were completely out. It was like, Alec, Man- I didn't want to say his name anymore. It, it got really disappointing. It got really depressing. Um, and to see how he sort of climbed back. I mean, it's too bad now, of course, with the injury, hopefully it's, you know, we, we heard it just a sprain. So it's nothing too, too bad. But yeah, he's a good guy to come back. And then David Schneider, I, I just feel like he is the heart and soul of this ball club right now. Yep. I mean, you, you get the walkout song. He's got the stroke as he's coming out. Like it's unbelievable. <laughs> this, the the whole ballpark just goes nuts. It's yeah, that's a great pick. And I think um, that's what a lot of people are saying. Just he, there's no better, there's no better guy to root for than him. And um, I'm and I'm going to the ballpark uh, in a week from when this airs uh, for the home series against Cleveland. The, 39 and 20 Cleveland guardians. I don't know what the hell is going on with that club, but, um, and I, every time I go to the park, I buy a Jersey and right now it's going to be a David Schneider Jersey, unless something really changes my mind over the next two weeks. So we'll see boys. Next time I pop on the show, might have a new tarp. Might have are, a new you, tarp. are you going powder blue again? Or are you going to go? With the dark? Oh, I don't, I don't even have a home blue Jersey. So oh. I, it's, yeah, I got to go with the classic. I, I got the powder blue. I got two whites and I got a, I got to throw back uh, Bautista, like the black one city oh. connects. All right though. But, uh, you gotta get the, you gotta get the home groups. Yeah, I think now I have, I've got my Josh Donaldson home. I got my Davis Schneider baby blue, and right. I think I'm gonna go with. I'm not sure who I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go Schneids again, but on the uh, City Connects. I said I gotta, gotta wrap it. I'm a, just a Jersey fiend. I think I have like 14 jerseys in my closet right now. <laughs> it's disgusting. I've got, I was gonna pull out the Athletics Donaldson jersey today, but you know. I had to keep that in the closet. Oh, well, we're playing them this week, so yeah, I would say. Yeah, keep, well, keep we, we went on with the uh, with the uh, Oakland Athletics guy today, so I was going to pull it on oh, and, then, okay. and then show the Donaldson, whatever, right? Uh, but I didn't. I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but I guess going forward, you know, we still got a lot of season left. Um, I hate that everybody says it's still early because it's no longer early, um, but still a lot of season left. And I want to get your prediction on the season. Um, and then I got something after for you as well, but just your prediction going forward, how is this team going to possibly finish? I, I just think they're going to spin their tires for the rest of the year. Honestly, like I think what we've seen from this ball club is what we're going to see for the rest of the year. You know, you get to trade deadline time. Are you buyers? Are you sellers? Like they got to make that decision and that will determine how, you know, the end of July, August, September goes for them. Um, but like we got to face the facts boys they're 12 and a half games back at the start of june that's not that's not good it, it you could talk about how good the yankees and the orioles have been you could talk about their schedule but the fact is i'm looking at the schedule other than the the oakland series they have you know they play them twice and they play them at the rogers center a little bit later in this season i don't see a series where i'm like yeah they they should, like could or should sweep this team and 2 and 1 3 out of 4 is not going to get it done when you're 12 and a half games back, you're four and a half games back of the wild card. And the teams that are ahead of you, like give me more optimism if I was their fans than, than watching this team. So I, I do like, I hate to say the word lost season. I'm an eternal optimist. I will be rooting my heart out for the ball club every night. Uh, But I think, you know, what you've, what you've seen is what you're going to get for the rest of the year with this team. And, I say fourth, fourth AL East. I, th- I think either Tampa or Boston's going to fall off a little bit, and and the trade deadline will influence that too. But I I don't see us climbing up into third at all. And obviously, if you don't even get to third, you're not getting the playoffs. Yeah, it's it's tough being in the AL beast here. But again, like this is definitely not where I saw this team being at right now. Twelve and a half games back at this point, you could pretty much just toss the division out the window. It's almost impossible with how good the Yankees are, how good the Orioles are to make up that sort of ground on these teams. But saying that. 
So Ross Atkins has kind of made his bed here. He's kind of left us with this product on the field. And also John Schneider, obviously you go back to that Minnesota twin series, the Jose Barrios thing that would have been a lot more prominent if the Blue Jays scored more than one run that entire series. But due to this lackluster start to the season, how much are you contributing that to uh, John Schneider or and Ross Atkins? Are you thinking they're both on the hot seat or do you think that Ross Atkins is going to make a big move at the deadline to save his, uh, his career with the Blue Jays? Just how do you feel like based off of what they've shown us, how much of this is their fault going into the season? I like if you're if you're to chop it up between the guys on the team, Ross Atkins, John Schneider, I would say like you gotta you gotta blame the nine guys on the field and the guy the guy on the bump, which is obviously it's not them most of the night. Like we all we all know that. But like 50% on the players. Like these are the guys put on the ball field, playing in the MLB, making millions of dollars. You gotta show up. And some of them have, some of them haven't. A lot of them, basically all of them, haven't been consistent. Uh, for the parts of the season that we've seen through two months. So I'll say like that's 30 or 50. I would give 30% maybe to Ross Atkins. Um, This is the roster he constructed. We sat here at the outset of the season saying you didn't show us anything uh, with the names that were on the market, with the moves you could have made and the the money you could have spent and you didn't. And, you know, hanging your hat on missing Shohei Otani is not, that's not good enough if you want to be a competitive ball club. And, and that's what ownership, that's what Rogers wants from the, from this ball club. Like they spent half a billion dollars on the stadium. They don't want a fifth place team going out there 81 games a, a year. And so I blame, I blame Ross Atkins for a lot of the off the field stuff. And then, yeah, like 20, you know, 15, 20%, I would say would probably be John Schneider's fault. There's some, some lineup decisions, you know, he drags his feet on some decisions, like finally taking Springer out of the lead off was a good move. Could have happened earlier in the season, uh, you know, for what we've seen from Schneid's obviously and stuff like that. So it, it's just tough, man. Like <laughs> and they know and, and Rogers, like they'll, they'll give up a big hit. The Jays will give up a big hit. They cut right to Schneider or they, you know, ground into a double play and the, and the inning, they cut right to Schneider. And, and he's just sitting there and like, uh, we all know what he looks like. Right. Like, so it's, it's tough. It, I feel ba- a little bit bad for him. I don't think this, this isn't the makeup of a team that we can expect uh, in 2025, probably expect for the second half of this year with the trade deadline uh, with the players on the field. And when it comes to the management and front office, I, I think there needs to be changes made. And I think if, if I'm looking at these standings pages right now and the Toronto blue Jays are in fifth place in the AL East, I will be like disappointed isn't the right word. I probably a word that's not safe for a podcast. If John Schneider, Ross Atkins take this team into the 2025 season, if 2024 ends up like how it looks right now, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's such the big component here is that it's, it's is on the players, right? It's the guys that we expected to have these amazing careers and, and go off and, and win awards and win titles and, nothing has shown us that this team has what it takes. And so you got to blame them a little bit, but say you're Ross Atkins and you're going to the trade deadline. Let's say the rest of this season with the team that's constructed here, the way that they're playing as of right now, what are you doing? Like, are you, are you pulling the plug? Are you trying to go and throw something at the wall and hope you can fight your way back? What, if you're in his shoes, what are you pulling off? Well, and, and he comes out today and says that it, doesn't make sense to trade Flatty and Bo uh, today being uh, June 2nd, Sunday, just, just wrapped up the Pittsburgh series. And I agree be, because like you, you're in no man's land. Like Vladdy's played better. What, what is his value? What is Boba Shett's value? You know, like Boba Shett last year, if you traded him, can you, can you imagine what you would have gotten return? He was the best player on the team, obviously. And uh, so I, yeah, I, I don't think those guys are going. I, maybe Springer, maybe Turner, like Springer has got a lot of cash attached to it. I don't know if a team wants a guy that has, you know, had a history of being injury prone and obviously has slowed down. He's not in center anymore. He's in right. Doesn't lead off anymore. He's batting freaking seventh this weekend. Uh, it, it's tough, man. I, I do think they could deal an arm. I like, I could see Kikuchi going, uh, which would really suck because he's, he's really proved himself over the last season and a half. And, endeared himself to fans i think like i'm a i'm a yusei kikuchi fan i think you boys are too just from listening to you every day and you know for a guy that had such a tough start to his blue jays career 
you know, that would really hurt, but you know, it just makes sense with where, where he's at in the contract, obviously, and, and the way he's pitching. So I do think, I think they pull something off the mound. Uh, like, I don't think these five, five starters that they have right now, you know, if say Alec Manoa is healthy and their fifth starter, I don't think those are the five starters they have on August 1st. I think someone's on wearing a different Jersey on a different team. That would be the move I would expect. Um, I almost hope for a little bit more if this is the team that we're going to see, you know, for the next seven weeks up until that point, uh, trade deadline day. So tough, man. It's, it's going to be entertaining because every night it's like, you, you know, set the tone for the next seven weeks with, with the, you know, the series against Baltimore four gamer, and then we'll see. And then you got to show me again for the next series and again, and again, and again. And, you know, then the front office has got to make their decisions from there. And, and, uh, you know, exciting in a bad way, I think, for Blue Jays fans, because you're not going in, into every game hoping you can or thinking you can win. Uh, you're going in every game just seeing what this team is going to look, you know, do on the field and then look like at the end of the season. And it could be a lot different than what we're seeing right now. Yeah, this Blue Jays team is just in a weird spot. They don't really have yep. a direction right now. Yep. Look at the team like the Colorado Rockies. At least at that point, they don't have expectation. They're letting their young guys play. You look at Pittsburgh, Paul Skeens, watching Jared Jones. There's probably have a lot of fun doing that as well. How the about the Blue Jays avoiding both of those guys this weekend? Though? That, was, that was nice, eh? Little uh, schedule makers on our side if here. If we didn't go two and one against the other three guys, like I would have, I would have been DEFCON five right now, uh, jumping on this podcast. So that was a treat. Sorry to cut you off, but that, yeah, that, that was, that was a nice. That was a must-win series. Then you could look at that Tiger series too. We missed Scooble. So clearly yeah. something is working out pretty well for us. But yeah, this team has the eighth highest payroll in all of baseball with all these World Series aspirations. And what have we gotten for it? No wins in the last like nine years of baseball for the Toronto Blue Jays team. So we do have the wild like, card banner though hanging there. So oh, that is true. Yeah, you can take that. You got the wild card banner hanging in the Rogers Center, just looking better than ever. But uh yeah, with this team, I mean something needs to change. Obviously, we can't uh, continue just being mediocre, especially in a division that is so good. If this team wants to make a run, they're going to have to switch something up, whether that's a big trade, whether that's looking at AAA. Spencer Horowitz is raking down there. Maybe Aurelis Martinez, you start his clock. I don't know what necessarily it is. Maybe you get that sausage like they have with the Minnesota Twins. Maybe that's the key. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, Brayden, I guess I'll throw it to you uh, for the last little bit here. Yeah, you know what, Skyler? It's been a blast. We've had you on a, a bunch of times. 100th episode. I can't believe uh, we've gotten here. But we appreciate every time that you come on, and hopefully we'll slowly get you on here more and more and more. Gentlemen, it, it is truly my pleasure. Uh, I was watching them in the airport today uh, in Ottawa and, and talking to the guy beside me. I'm like, yeah, I'm jumping on a Blue Jays podcast tonight. You know, it, it's, it just puts a smile on my face whenever I see that text uh, from you, Braden, asked me to come on. So I uh, have prepared a little toast, gentlemen. 100 episodes. Pray to God you guys get 100 more out of this network. Like, they haven't found out about you yet. So just keep it going, boys. And it's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. So uh, cheers to that before we go. Cheers, cheers boys. We were out of shots, so that was a, just a straight beer to the lips after just a brutal night out. Yeah, that, that one didn't feel too good. But, I mean, we're going to be back in the same spot next weekend. So let's be honest. I, I did not think after the weekend I had that I'd be having another tequila shot. But <laughs> here, here we are. Well... <laughs> We appreciate it, as always. Uh, guys, we're going to send things over to us, and we're going to bring on Dallin, the bald eagle, Wilton, right away. Today's episode is also sponsored by Prize Picks. Me and Braden have watched pretty much every Blue Jays game so far this season, and when we've been watching, I've been finding myself predicting the next outcome. Lately, it's been pretty bad because as the day we're recording this, the Toronto Blue Jays have lost the first two games of the series to the Baltimore Orioles. Just been getting absolutely steamrolled, and this offense is just very painful to watch. But Price Fix does give me the opportunity to not just prove myself to Braden, but to make money off my predictions as well. So don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your Price Fix entries, whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs. Take your pick of more than or less than and add them to your Price Fix entries today. Price Fix is very simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entries in as little as 60 seconds. I'm a huge prize picks guy, obviously, because I'm a huge fantasy guy. I'm literally in an NFL draft right now. We're in MLB fantasy. We do NHL fantasy, all that kind of stuff. So I can put my money where my mouth is, ride or die with all the players that I have on my fantasy teams. So if you know which players are going to perform on specific nights, this is a no-brainer. Download prize picks and start making your picks today. So you can download the app and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. That's code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. Segment two, 
of the 100th episode special. Welcoming in Dallin, the bald eagle, Wilton, ladies and gentlemen, for coming back. He's going to be a guest going forward. Baba, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. What about you guys? Pumped up. 100 episodes. It's crazy. I can't believe it's gone this fast. Yeah, it just feels like yesterday when we started this podcast. And here we are, 100 episodes later, still dialed into the Toronto Blue Jays, hoping for a little bit of better product on the field because this Toronto Blue Jays team has been a letdown so far, at least in my opinion. But I'll give it to you to start off. How have you viewed this team so far to start this season? Has it met your expectations, gone above your expectations? That happens. That's a little bit ridiculous. Or has it gone below your expectations to start the season? No, I mean, like I said last time I was on here, I, I would say that it's below. Um, I expect so much more from this team. But, you know, recently, I mean, we had a bit of a winning streak there, given it was against not as great of teams. But, um, you know, there are, are some things to look forward to, but um, not the start that I could imagine we should have had. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's yeah, I feel like that's everybody right now. We're all sort of in the same boat where maybe we're, you know, optimistic fans that maybe we shouldn't be, but we go into the season hoping and feeling like this, you know, they might give it a go. We might see a change up. And of course that doesn't happen, but uh, we, we've, we asked Skylar this as well. Um, and I guess one guy, your most electric player, your, your, your player that you're every day, you, you want to see them do well, or you're watching for them. Who would that be? A favorite player. Yeah, favorite player. Wow. Well, I got to give credit credit to Davis Schneider. I mean, he's he's one good. But a guy that I actually like seeing is uh, Garcia out of the bullpen every time he pitches. Just because he's got it done for us this year. He's been the guy in that pen this year. And he's done exceptionally well in each role that he's been given. Whether, whether it's, you know, the 6th, 7th, 8th, even the ninth lately. He's shutting it down for us, stepping up for Romano. So that's a guy that I enjoy watching uh every time he takes them out no he has been absolutely filthy this year for a bullpen that's struggled mightily so far to start the season when you look at guys like chad green who's been injured you look at jordan romano yimmy garcia actually injured to start the season as well but comes back and just looks unbelievable yimmy garcia has been probably the easily the best reliever in this bullpen i don't think that's necessarily something that a lot of people had on their bingo card but saying this looking at this toronto blue jays team right now What does this team need to do to get over that hump? Clearly, they're not on track to make the playoffs. So I guess it's kind of a two-part question. Where do you see this Toronto Blue Jays season ending, for one? And for two, is there a move that you can see that this team needs to make, whether it's going to AAA, looking for some hitters there, whether it's blowing up maybe this team, whether it's going to the trade market and looking for a guy maybe like Ryan McMahon to come to this Toronto Blue Jays team? So the first part of the question, again, is, is this team making the playoffs? And what is your big move that this team should make? You know what, like, people are very disappointed, obviously I am, but you got to remember, like, we're a game and a half back out of a wild card spot right now, so we're still there, we're still in the hunt, there's still lots of season to go, I think changes now, I mean, you see them moving around Vladdy and stuff, um, playing him at a third base the other day, I mean, like you guys mentioned in your recent pod, uh, maybe it's time for Spencer Horowitz, because he's raking in AAA, you also have guys like, or Levis Martinez and Nathan Lucas, uh, we've seen Addison Barger in the big leagues and, you know, he's got power to his bat. So I'm not going to blow this team up. If anything, I'm going to retool a little bit, but I'm going to do it within the organization. So bring up those guys that are playing exceptionally well in AAA. I don't see why you wouldn't give them a shot given where you're at right now. So Dell, just going on to that, that point, because I think that's sort of how we feel as well. I don't necessarily think that it's a good thing if they blow this team up. I, and I think, all the fans are sort of together. Some people want to see them go, obviously. Um, but I don't necessarily know if we get better from doing that. I don't necessarily know if the price tag is right for these guys. So looking inside this organization, would you rather see like Kevin Kiermeyer not come back next year? George Springer getting less playing time? Uh, obviously, I don't know what you do with IKF going forward. What would your sort of situation be if you do bring up some of those young guys? You know, that's that's a tough one because, you know, Kiermaier is great defensively, but the bat hasn't been there all year, and that's something that we need right now. The defense can manage, but the, the bats need to come out more. We're not getting enough hits, not driving in enough runs. 
So, I mean, if you have to let go of Kevin Kiermaier, you can do it. George Springer is George Springer. He's going to, I think he's going to find it eventually. And also he's great defensively. We've seen a lot of amazing catches by him lately. So, um, you know what, if we had to part with some guy like that, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it to bring up someone within the organization. I like the thought of, you know, homegrown, home raised and, you know, get these guys going. If you get them going now, it's only going to lead to years of success down the road. Yeah, and as we are here right now, you got to look at this team. Their window is coming to a close. Everyone is saying 2025 is the end of the Toronto Blue Jays window, and they have to be correct with that when you're looking at how many of these players are free agents. Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., that's just to start off the list. But obviously, as of right now, the day we are recording this, this team is three games below 500. So obviously there is a there, there's a bunch of things that you could blame for this team. You could blame Ross Atkins with this roster construction. You could blame John Schneider, maybe not the manager that is going to put this team over the hump. You, I think at some point you do have to blame the players as well. But for you personally, which of those three components of this team are you blaming the most? And what Skyler did, he gave us kind of a percentage thing. So he said, for example, he's blaming the players 70%. So break it down in percentage-wise. But out of these three components, Ross Atkins, John Schneider's managerial decisions, and just him as a manager and the product and these players on the field, which part component of this team is the most to blame? You know, Atkins has put together on paper a, a good squad. Um, but, you know, he hasn't gone out and got those big name players. Like I know we had in the summer rumors of Otani and I mean, that would have been great, but obviously that didn't happen, but he didn't even look for a second option after that. You know, he re-signs Kevin Kiermaier. Um, he didn't look for a big-name player, and I think getting a guy like that would put us over the hump. But, um, you know, I would blame maybe 40% on Atkins. Schneider, his his decision-making has not been great this year. There has been times, very little, that it's been good, but... Um, as a manager, you need to know how to manage your ball club, obviously. I mean, you're not you're not mixing up the lineup where it was before, but now now you are. You should have done that sooner. You're pulling guys early out of the games or you're making them pitch too long. We saw today, I mean, Gosman got uh, batted, or Monday, sorry, Gosman got hit pretty hard, but he kept him in for the seventh, which, you know, at that point, if you're giving up, what was it, five runs at the time, I think you got to pull him out. So I'm going to give – Probably 30% to John Schneider. And then, uh, you know, the last 30% is on the players. I mean, you guys are going out there every day to play baseball. And your job is to hit the ball. And that's not what's happening with these guys. They're not hitting the ball. They're not driving in runs. Um, I mean, we're terrible with runners in scoring positions. So uh, 30% of that is on those guys because they got to come out and start performing more. Yeah, Dal. And you know what? It it's frustrating, right? Because on paper, like you said, this team should be able to win ball games. It's it's actually insane. Like if you would have went back five, six years ago and told me what this squad was looking like, I would be thinking that maybe we're a you know AL East contender for the top of the AL East, and it's just not there. These guys just aren't playing as as well as we need them to, and that's so frustrating. And I think especially with the long buildup coming from seasons and seasons and seasons of Vlad and Bo and Kevin are our next three. And now we're barely even seeing Kevin at all. And Vlad and Bo, I mean, just, I, I want to throw you a little bit to them because I mean, they, they are the pieces of this team that need to be unbelievable. And don't get me wrong. They've been better as of late, but just as the two of them supposed to be this, this team superstars, just maybe talk on them a little bit as well. Yeah. And like you said before, like they are becoming free agents and, you know, just as much as us, they probably want to win. So we need to do something, bring in someone maybe so that, you know, we have a deep playoff run and that maybe makes them excited for the future of this team. Um, that maybe something great's going to happen. Uh, those guys, I mean, there's been a lot of rumors that they might get traded. I don't think that's going to happen. You can't trade two guys like that. Um, but they're the guys that put butts in the seats for, for the Jays. I mean, you'll always have fans coming, but those guys are some major name players that people come to watch every night. So I love that we're seeing more from them. Like they've really stepped up and, you know, it's going to be their job to really ignite the flame within the dugout and, and that 
and that clubhouse there to get everyone else going on the same page because they're the leaders. So they need to do a job and start motivating some guys. Well, and Ross Atkins has come out and said that he is more willing to extend them rather than to trade them. So that's an inter- interesting direction for this team that is three games under 500 right now and last in the AL East. This is a huge debate that me and Braden have had multiple times. Do we want to re-sign Bo? Do we want to re-sign Vlad? What is their trade value at this point? And I think kind of what the the conclusion we reached every single time was we're not ready to see this team go into a rebuild. Not at all. We want to see this team actually win a playoff game because under Ross Atkins, I don't count 2016. What has he done with this roster? We have gotten zero playoff wins in over eight seasons. Clearly, that is not good enough. Something has to change. I just want to say thank you, Dallin, for coming on to our podcast. We appreciate you every single time Every single time you come out here. Always fun. Uh, just kind of talking about the Blue Jays, snapping around a little bit on this podcast, well, going over the goods and the bad times. Brayden, you got anything else to add about this segment? No, I, I mean, it's just, it's crazy that we're already at 100 episodes, Carter. I, I didn't mention this uh, when we were with Skyler, and I don't think so. I shaved the mustache back. This is the exact look I had when we recorded the demo uh, back, what is that, almost six months ago now? And yeah, this uh, one, yeah. And uh, it was just hilarious. I was just checking out uh, on my Da Vinci program, and I still have the demo saved in Da Vinci. And I was like, wow, I, I had to throw it back to the, uh, you know, to the the start of everything. So, Bubba, we're gonna keep having you on. We we love having you on. You know, it's it's the boys. We're all from the same small town. It, it doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. I look forward to the future and make sure you keep that mustache, Braden. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Okay, uh, we're going to move it back, throw it back to our final segment here. Me and Carter are going to do a little bit of a wrap up. And uh, yeah, again, 100 episode. Thanks for everybody. Continue watching. Thank you guys all for tuning in to our 100th episode of this podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure. Don't get me wrong. It is it is a lot of work. We put a lot of time into this, with it, whether it's the TikToks and the shorts and the reels, whether it's watching the games and discussing and editing all the podcasts together. Uh, it's a lot of work, but honestly, it it couldn't be more fun. I mean, you're talking baseball, you're watching baseball. And Carter, I got to give you some props too. It's been an absolute blast doing this podcast with you. Uh, yeah, it, I couldn't ask for a better person to be doing this with. Yeah, I feel like we jumped into this podcast and had pretty good chemistry off rip. Obviously, we've been friends for a very long time, whether it's scrambling, talking about baseball. Obviously, we're big golfers as well. Whether we're just managing the Rippers uh, slow pitch team, we're obviously playing men's as well. We just snap it around in all facets of our life here. So it's been awesome. Just uh, to take a step back here, just looking at the numbers already. I'm like, it's I'm not a big numbers guy, whatever. Like if there's five people watching this podcast, we'd be doing it anyway as well. But you look and I think at this point, we're at like 1360 for subscribers. Just like that number, it's a number on a screen. It's kind of hard to just visualize it. But the fact that there's over even a thousand people listening to what we talk about, whether it's accurate, inaccurate, whether it's just delusional Blue Jays fans, which we all probably are at this point after just watching this up and down roller coaster we've had of this Toronto Blue Jays season, it's been absolutely insane. I didn't think we'd even get close to getting here four and a half months into our podcasting careers. It's been absolutely nuts. So I uh, just wanted to say a huge thank you, obviously, for both me and Braden to all the people watching this podcast, all the fans out there. We're not done. We're not even close to being done. We're going to be doing this for years to come. We're so excited. Hopefully you guys are excited as well. We love the comments, the debates we have with the fans. That's the best part. We went to Toronto. We met a c- couple of you guys out there just interacting with you guys in the comment section. Just, I feel like we're a very relatable podcast. It's just two guys just talking baseball, two fans of the Toronto Blue Jays, two guys that ride or die with this team. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are watching this that also ride or die with this team. Probably let the Blue Jays ruin your day a little bit too often. But I mean, hey, that's sports fandom. It is what it is. I wouldn't trade this for the world. Yeah, and we got a long season ahead of us yet. Who knows? I don't know. I, I, we might hit 200 by the end of the season. We'll see. I, I actually, I, I'm not a math guy, so I don't know if that lines up, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and yeah, it's it's just been an absolute blast. And and me and Carter, uh, you know, we talk about this off camera too, just of how much fun it is when we see the comments. Sometimes you guys, sometimes you guys let us know how wrong we are, but it's but it is it's all fun. I mean, we we love talking the game. Uh, you know, we do even on weekends when we necessarily don't do a podcast, we still put try to get out a TikTok or whatever. But then we just sit on the couch. We end up doing the same thing we would have done if the the camera was on. So absolute blast you guys um keep watching keep tuning in keep letting us know how much of idiots we are or how much you agree with us we like it either way to hear it so 
Uh, like I said, I will not be here uh, to start the week. I might be. It's it's still pretty up in the air. We'll see what happens. Uh, but if not, I hope you guys will enjoy having Skyler and Dal and Carter doing it for the first three days of this next coming week here. And then I'll be back better than ever, either relaxed or super hungover. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, Carter, again, thanks a, thanks a bunch, brother. It means uh, this means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we do head out, just want to take this one more opportunity to throw it over to the Locked On 24-7 streaming channel. Pretty much any sport you can think of, the big four, obviously, and then college sports as well. Perfect opportunity to get expert analysis. Uh, yeah, this is just absolutely crazy. Uh, like I said, I, I'll say this a million times, but I just I never thought we'd get here at this point. It's been absolutely insane. Uh, we are posting uh, shorts, reels, TikToks pretty often as well. So if you guys aren't following us over there, take the time, watch a couple of those. They're definitely, for me, a lot more emotional than I am on this podcast. So they only have 60 seconds, and it's usually right after the game. So usually the emotions are uh, feel pretty high at that point, especially with the way the Toronto Blue Jays win and lose baseball games. Yeah, I, I can't even express in words how thankful I am for everyone that watched this podcast. But like I said, we are not done. We have a long season ahead of us. We're excited. And I guess we'll see you guys on Monday.